As a young teenager, some of my first introductions to literature were through Russian short stories. I had read so much Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, and Chekhov that I came to think that all literature was like this, that it was set in rural Russia, that it was often melancholic, and that it always lacked a clear resolution by the end. I went on to discover many other authors from all parts of the world, but I still look back at the Russian writers as some of the best craftsmen when it comes to short stories. In this video, I want to try and understand why, as well as give some suggestions on where to start. Virginia Woolf wrote in one of her essays that the soul is the chief character in Russian literature. I think this is a great way to approach Russian short stories, to understand that beyond the plot, the stories deal with the innermost soul of their characters. This is the case with The Kiss by Anton Chekhov. The story's protagonist, Ryabovich, is an army officer whose brigade is invited to tea at the mansion of a local landowner. At the house, Ryabovich accidentally walks into a room in the dark, and while he's there, a woman comes in and, mistaking him for someone else, kisses him. This kiss changes Ryabovich's attitude to life, and the rest of the story is concerned with how this change affected him. It is a story about chance encounters and about the small events that give meaning to our life. Another short story by Chekhov that I always enjoy is titled The Joke. It is about a sleigh ride in the mountains and saying the words, I love you. The protagonists are two children, and the premise is essentially innocent, yet Chekhov manages to charge it with a profoundly melancholic tone and a sense of regret and lost opportunities in just a few pages. Lastly, I want to consider a longer story by Tolstoy, some even consider it a novella, and this story changed the way I viewed the power of literature when I first read it. The death of Ivan Illich is precisely about that, the sudden illness and death of a high-ranking court of justice official, Ivan Illich. There is a wonderful quote, also by Regina Wolf, which describes Tolstoy's power as a writer. She says, Nothing seems to escape him, nothing glances off him unrecorded. Nobody, therefore, can so convey the excitement of sport, the beauty of horses, and all the fierce desirability of the world to the senses of a strong, young man. Yet this story was written late in Tolstoy's life, and instead of showing that fierce desirability of life, which Wolf talks about, it shows the pangs of regret and unfulfillment which Ivan Illich suffers in his deathbed. It achieves the exhaustive inquiry into a man's soul that Dostoevsky's novels do, yet it is condensed in many fewer pages. It is an endlessly rewarding story that can be read and reread at many stages in one's life. It shows what literature can achieve, and if every work of art deserves to be judged according to the best, then this is one to judge all other short stories by. I will now read a passage from the short story. This is from the early parts of the story, where Ivan Illich's life is being described before his illness. His gentrified and comfortable way of looking at the world will crumble down in the rest of the story. They were left with a few short periods of amorousness that came over them as husband and wife, but these did not last long. These were nothing more than little islands where they could enter for a while, only to plunge back into a sea of hidden facility as they grew further and further apart. This growing apart might have upset Ivan Illich if he had thought there was anything wrong with it, but now not only did he consider this state of affairs to be quite normal, he saw it as the whole point of his role in the family. His role was to distance himself increasingly from all the unpleasantness and give it an air of harmless respectability. This he achieved by spending less and less time with the family, and when he was forced to be with them, he sought to safeguard his own position by ensuring the presence of others. But the main thing was that Ivan Illich did have his work. It was in the world of his work that the whole interest of his life came into focus, and this interest absorbed him totally. The knowledge of the power that he wielded, the possibility of ruining anyone that he fancied ruining, the gravitas, even if it was all outward show, which could be sensed as he walked into court or dealt with his subordinates, success that he was enjoying with his peers and subordinates alike, and, above all, his masterly handling of the cases. All of this gave him pleasure, and, along with chit-chat with colleagues, dinners and twists, filled his life to the full. And so, life in general proceeded for Ivan Illich just as he thought it should proceed, pleasantly and respectably. I have provided links in the video description for where you can buy these works. You can also find most of them freely available on the internet. Thank you very much for watching.